Good afternoon and welcome to Holy Comforter St. Cyprian Roman Catholic Church. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday in Easter. Our celebrant today is our pastor, Monsignor Pope. Before we begin, I ask that you all sit in a quiet place with your family and your friends and join in with this worship. Please join in with singing our first song, I Know My Redeemer Lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. It's uh, today, the fifth Sunday of, uh, we've already heard of Easter, and uh, we're going to hear today uh, that not only is Jesus is a, is a rock, but we're also to be living stones built as a great edifice in, in the church. And so. We're all to carry our load and do our part. So as we begin this sacred liturgy, let's acknowledge our sins, particularly sins where we haven't, sins of omission maybe, where we haven't done our part. And let's ask the Lord to, to have mercy upon us, acknowledging our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Recited. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, we receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the 12 called together the community of disciples and said, 
it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at the table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, and also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-string lyre, chant his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without the faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a royal race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? 
Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. So I uh, greet all of you from Holy Comfort of St. Cyprian and any, any others who might be listening in from other, other places and I got to tell you, first of all, I want to be to express gratitude that uh, George Stewart is here and Tammy Holly, and uh, we have also um, uh, Ben Brelov is, is, is serving and uh, lecturing, and also then Deacon Nathaniel Anderson from both of them from this diocese, seminarians, and the deacon will soon to be ordained a priest. So, bless God indeed. I want to say that um, also you all really surprised me <laughs> on Sunday. You gave me a road rally. To, to, it's, it's, I have, I've had calls from all over the country. <laughs> we saw that, Father. That's great. You, your people really love you. And I said, yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. Brother Priest called me very, very excited, too. So I just want you to know I'm so, so grateful for what you did on Sunday. It's just, it was just an amazing tribute of, uh, of your love for the parish. And, and I, I thank you for your love for me. And um, I am I'm deeply, deeply grateful. So... And I can tell you that, uh, that that video is going viral right now on the <laughs> on the internet, YouTube. You know, just a word in the gospel, but I want to really mainly preach out of the first reading today. Uh, I'm sorry, the epistle, the second reading. But you know, this gospel we proclaim at almost every funeral, and it always starts out this way: "Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith in me." And in my Father's house are many dwelling places, and one of them I go to prepare for you. And then he goes on to say, look, when it's prepared, I'll come back and I'll take you to myself, so that where, you are, where I am you also may be. And listen, the goal in your life and mine is to live a holy life. I want to die loving God and my neighbor so I can go home and be with God. And if you're faithful, the day that you die is the greatest day of your life. The Lord comes and calls you back home to our true homeland in heaven. And so... We all fear, I think, dying in the sense of the natural dying process, but do not be afraid, says the Lord. Don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. I want you to know that um, I'm leading you places. You don't always understand my ways. There are some ups and downs in life, but if you're faithful, ultimately I'm going to call you to yourself. And even the valley of the shadow of death, don't be afraid, because I've just come to call you home, and your mansion, your room in my Father's kingdom is ready. And so these are things that we proclaim at almost every funeral here at the parish. And uh, it's a beautiful passage of, con of, of, if you will, consolation for us. Now then, I want to speak uh, today particularly out of this um, second reading, this epistle, if you will. And it's, um, it's from 1 Peter. And, the, um, and we see that uh, we, we have here uh, First Peter in the second chapter, and I'm going to ask you a question: Are you a living stone, or are you just a tombstone? All right, are you a living stone, or are you just a tombstone? See, and of course, obviously, we we know what we're supposed to be, right? We're supposed to be living stones. You know, when we maybe this is an introductory thing. The Lord Jesus, by His resurrection, He's brought us from death to life. He snatched us from this present evil age, and and there are three, if you will, characteristics about salvation, that he saved us, he snatched us, he saved us from this present evil age. He brought us out of the kingdom of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of light. And so the Lord speaks today of us in this, to us in this reading of, if you will, three characteristics of, of, um, of the salvation. The call of salvation, hmm? the choice of salvation, and then some characteristics of that salvation. So first of all, just the call of salvation. The text begins, come to Jesus, a living stone 
rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house. Now, two words that strike me here again, the call of salvation. Two words in that passage, come and let, right? So, come to Jesus. He's calling you. He's calling you every day. He's calling me every day. Yes, we've answered him, but answer him every day. And if you've never answered him, well, if you're not walking, start while I'm talking, walking up the King's Highway. When he calls, answer him. See, he calls, he calls, but he does await our answer. And so, awaiting that answer, he's calling, he's calling every day. And then it says, like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. Now, each of us, if you will, or the Lord is saying, let me, if you will, build you into a spiritual house. Collectively, he's speaking to the whole church, but also to us individually. He's saying, You're, I want you to become a living stone in the edifice of my house. And you know, this beautiful church, we see all these stones, you know, all these things here um, in, uh, you know, in, in beautiful harmony. And every stone carries a little bit of the load. Every stone has its place. You know, you think about it, Putting the word living stone together sounds like that's the craziest thing ever. Nothing deader than a piece of rock, you know? The last thing we think of as alive is a rock. And yet he's calling us living stones. So what are some of the characteristics, though, though, of, shall we say, a li of, of, of this living stone? Well, first of all, we are to be alive. We're to be alive. We're supposed to be full of life, full of joy, full of zeal. So again, joyfully joyfully hearing this call of Jesus and allowing ourselves to be built up by him, encouraged by him, and, and, and just strengthened by him in every way. But to be stone, what are some of the qualities of stone that we could imitate? Well, stones are firm. They're weighty. Good and weighty, right? In other words, uh, uh, but they're not easily moved, in other words. And they're able to withstand a heavy load, you see. So the Lord is saying, let me build you up. Let me take from you. I want you to be alive, but I want you to have some of the characteristics of, of a stone or a rock. You know, that you're, you're firm. You're not easily moved. Uh, cast about by the winds like a leaf and uh, by all this treachery and false doctrines of the world blown about or uh, like, like leaves in the breeze. No, I want you to be firm and not easily moved, weighty, and I want you to be able to carry a kind of a heavy load, you see. And so these are the qualities then. We're alive, fully alive, and yet like a stone, we have all these other qualities. And then he says, let yourself though be built into a spiritual house so that we're not alone. We're, we're joined with others, you see. We're joined with others. And so in the church, we're not merely saved unto ourselves, but we're also saved for the sake of others. Uh, I've told you so many times what, a, what an incredible joy and a support and an encouragement that you have been to me over these years. Where would I be without you? You've lifted me up. You've helped me up. You've supported me, you've encouraged me, and I, I pray I've also been a rock uh, a st of stability for you as well. But we're called to be this not just for ourselves, but for the sake of others. And so we're built into a spiritual house. Now again, if you were to just look at the stones in this arch, you, know, you might not be able to see all of it there in the, in the focus, but these beautiful arches, all these stones leaning, leaning towards the center and moving all that weight down to the pillars and everything working together. You take one stone out, one stone, the whole thing begins to collapse, you see. Even in a wall of bricks, you take one or two bricks out and the thing begins to sag after a while. And so every one of us, you see, we have a role to play. And without us, the church is weaker. The church is less strong, less stable. So again, let your, hear the Lord. He's calling. Come to him and let yourself be made like living stones, be built into a spiritual house. So the first thing we notice then in this saving work in our life is that the Lord calls us to salvation and calls us to be, allow ourselves to be built as living stones into a spiritual edifice that is the church, members of his body. 
Now, the second thing is not just the call of salvation, but the, the choice of salvation. There's just a little word in this section I want to emphasize. He says, whoever believes in the Lord Jesus shall not be put to shame. Uh, therefore, its value is for you who have faith. But, and that's our word, but for those without faith, he becomes the stone that the builders rejected, that has become the cornerstone, that will make people stumble, a rock that will make them fall, and they will stumble by disobeying his word, as is their destiny. Now, I can't go through all the aspects of that, but again, that little word, but, you have a choice to make, and I have a choice to make. The Lord's calling, and he's saying, let me go to work in your life. And not just in your life, but let me help you to be part of other people's lives. Let me make you a member of my church, of my body. Let me go to work in your life. And so it is, and if you will let me do that, I will be for you the great cornerstone. We'll talk about that in a moment. I'll be the great cornerstone of your life. But if you choose not to, you'll just trip over me. You'll trip and fall. I'll be something that causes you trouble, you see. So the Lord obviously says you've got a choice to make, right? Now, let's talk for a minute about, again, what is meant by a cornerstone. Most of us think of that as a ceremonial rock outside of a church like we have one here in front of our church and has the date and inside there's some historical documents and that's just a ceremonial cornerstone the real cornerstones sometimes called the head of the corner in, in greek here again if you if you think of the arches of these this church there are three critical stones there's the stone at the bottom of the arch and then the other side of the arch and there's the one up at the center the keystone and those stones have to be just perfect because everything else depends on them. All the other stones are depending on that head of the corner, that, that rock at the bottom of this arch. It's got to be perfect. Everything's depending, and that's Jesus. That's Jesus. He's the cornerstone. Again, he's that one that we can lean on, that we can depend on. He's a rock in a weary land. He's a shelter in a time of storm. Has he ever made a way when you didn't have a dime? Has he ever stepped in just right on time? Then you know he is a rock in a weary land. He's a shelter in a time of storm. Jesus is the rock, the rock, that cornerstone. And the whole arch, all the other stones depend on him. And if he's not strong, we won't be strong. But he is strong, y'all. He is. Another, another song says, I'm leaning, leaning on the everlasting arm. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. And so it is that uh, he says, let me be this for you. But if not, you're going to be, I'm going to be a step, a tripping stone for you. You'll, you'll, you'll trip and you'll, you'll fall. I'll cause you to stumble, you see, because, um, well, <laughs> well, either way, you've got to deal with Jesus one day, right? You, can't, you, you just can't, you can't get around him, you can't get over him, you can't get under him. You can't get around him. You just, you just, you're going to have to deal with Jesus one day. Don't trip. He wants to support you. He wants to help you, you see. Otherwise, he says, you will trip and you will fall. Now then, we've seen two of the three things I wanted to say. There's the call of salvation. And there's that choice of salvation, right? Let this happen. Let, choose, choose well, my friends. Choose well. Now, then we come to the characteristics of salvation. He, he lists four of them. Your chosen race. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You're a people of his own so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So if we will let the Lord call us to salvation and we choose rightly, what do we as individuals and we as a church ultimately become? Again, first of all, a chosen race. He mentions our pedigree. He mentions our priesthood. He mentions our place, and he mentions our proclamation. So as to our pedigree, you are a chosen race, a chosen race. You know, of all the people, Israel was a small little nation, not so great, hardly known, and yet the Lord chose them to be a chosen people. And from them, he's now sprung forth to bring forth all the nations into a chosen people, a chosen people called the church. And so if we've received this invitation, you know, to him, we ought to see the great dignity. You know, if you were to receive uh, an invitation to go to a great feast of a great dignitary or a king, you would feel so honored. But he says, listen, I've chosen you. I've chosen you. Do you see the dignity of having been chosen? And so there's this beautiful aspect. 
And there's no greater dignity than you have than simply this, that I was chosen by the Lord and made a son or a daughter of his in baptism. You know, some people call me Monsignor, <laughs> but my greatest title is no, no, no different than yours, child of God, you see. We all like our titles, all this stuff, but you know, at the end of the day, your, your, greatest, your greatest title is not any degree or any title like doctor or uh, any of those, or Monsignor or Bishop or any of those things. The greatest thing is simply this, child of God. So we're a chosen race. That's our pedigree. We're chosen, chosen. Likewise, we have a royal priesthood. We're, it says we have a priesthood. So that, what does a priest do? A priest offers sacrifice. Now, I am a ministerial priest, but all of us, by baptism, having been chosen by Christ, share in his priesthood. We call it the royal priesthood of all believers. So although the lay faithful don't stand at an altar and offer the mass, nevertheless, you do offer sacrifice, the sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice of your very life, of your tithes, of your offerings, of your love, the gift of your very self. Because in the New Testament, the priest and the victim are one and the same. In the Old Testament, the priest would take an animal or a cereal offering or some other offering and would offer it. It would be separate from him. But in the priesthood of Jesus, Jesus offered his, his very self. He became the lamb of sacrifice. And so for you and me who would be priest, the sacrifice we make is not separate from us. It's our very self. Our self, our praise, our time, our talent, our treasure, everything that we have belongs to the Lord. We offer our lives in sacrifice. This, so we have our pedigree, that we're a chosen race. We have our priesthood. We also then have our place. You're, he says, you, you, you are a holy nation. Now the word holy means to be set apart, to be different. Part of the problem we struggle with in the church is that we want to fit in and sound like everybody else and look like everybody else and be like everybody else. And we're throwing away the very thing the Lord most needs from us to be different, to be distinctive, not in some kind of uh, you know, sociopathic way, but, but in a way when we live the gospel and we really believe and we hold up these teachings, we're often going to be out of fashion, way behind the times, and frankly obnoxious to some people. We'll, we'll get called all kinds of names. But we're supposed to be different. Different. Because Christ is not of the world. And neither are we to be of the world. So we ought to seem like a kind of a strange foreign people in the midst of a land. We should sound different. Act different. You know, those people dress funny. They, they have that funny accent. They talk funny. Yeah, that's right. You know, we, we have these unusual doctrines and things that, that are not the same as the world around us. Our priorities should be different. We're not to be like everyone around us. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you're not of the world, I called you out of the world. Therefore, the world will hate you. Now, we're not looking to be hated. But, you know, if we're really doing this, we're being a holy nation, a, pe a people set apart we will be recognizably distinct. We're not simply going to parrot whatever the world says. And we're going to get into some trouble for that. It's going to cause us a little suffering and grief and pain. Little things and big things. But that's part of who we are. So we have a pedigree, a priesthood, a place. We're a holy nation. We're set apart. And then finally a proclamation. So that you may announce the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his own wonderful light. And I'll just get back to that song I was quoting a minute ago. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, you know. He's a shelter in a time of storm. Has he ever picked you up when you were down? Has he ever set your feet on solid ground? Then you know he is a rock in a weary land. Do, you, do people hear you announce the praises of God? God's been good to me. He's, been, he's taken good care of me. He loves me. I haven't had a perfect life, but I tell you, he's brought me out of difficulties. He's a rock in a weary land. Oh, he's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. And he chose me, and he let me become a stone in this edifice of the church. And I'm trying to carry my own load, and he's helping me, and he loves me. He's called me. I'm so happy that the Lord's at work in my life. I'm so happy. And I'm leaning on him, and I'm trusting him. God's been good to me. Do people hear you talk like that? Do you testify? Or are you a secret agent saint? Are you an undercover Christian? Are you a stealthy saint? Hmm? Or do people know, hey, you know Jesus. Yes, I know him. I know him for myself. Yes, I know Jesus. I know him for myself. So today, Jesus has 
saved us and all these different characteristics are given. I won't repeat them all again, but I will simply say to you, are you a tombstone or are you a living stone? You're supposed to be a living stone. Try not to be a tombstone. Somebody say amen. Let's uh, say our creed now together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, we bless you. We thank you for being our Savior, for Jesus, for being our rock. So help us, uh, Lord, to lean on you, to trust you, to let you be the foundation of our life, and help us to also then become living stones, carrying our own load and helping others to carry their part of the burden. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray today for all who suffer, especially on account of this plague that we're going through. We, we pray for those who are sick, suffering, those who might be dying. We pray also for those who are out of work. We pray for those who are struggling to make ends meet at this time. Please, Lord, um, help all of us who suffer in these times. You're leading us through a difficult period, but help us to remember the words of the gospel. Do not be afraid. In my Father's kingdom, there are many mansions. Do not be afraid. Have faith in God. Have faith in me. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we bless you and thank you also for our loved ones. Um, we pray particularly for those who may have died recently and Please welcome them quickly to the kingdom of heaven. But for all of our families, grant health and life and strength, all of our friends, and for our enemies too, we pray. We ask, Lord, bless everyone in the world today. And Lord, please look into our hearts and see our many needs and concerns and answer all of our prayers now in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Jesus is a rock in a
And now please pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice of your hands for with the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good, good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. O God, who by this wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with, and your, with spirit. your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. Take, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Wilton our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Cyprian, and with all the saints to have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom the, power, the power, and the glory are yours, yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And, and with your spirit. takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Hail, Holy Queen, enthroned above, O Hail, Queen of mercy and of love, O Maria. Triumph, O ye cherubim, sing with us, ye seraphim. Heaven and earth resound the hymn. So
and let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I just want to remind you that the church is open every day if you're able to get by and want to say some prayers here. And we, um, had a, we've had um, many people come through all week long, and I still hear confessions at regular times. You can look at the Holy Comforter website to find out those times. And just so many other things, uh, but basically that the, we're doing Bible studies online, a lot, of, a lot of things that are still going on, if you will, online or in other ways, uh, more privately. And just, just know we're here for you. And I, I love every one of you, and I just can't tell you again how grateful I was for our, our religious road rally uh, on, the, uh, on Sunday. That was, that, that was a total surprise, and I was just amazed. So God bless every one of you who took part and who prepared it. So again, just know I, I love you, I missed you, and let's look forward to the day that we can get back together uh, in larger groups and begin to fill again, fill in these pews. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Please join in with singing our closing hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Third verse. What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the ever